Hey, welcome back guys. My name is Mr. Sanders. I'm still just about the comfort shoe guy. I've managed to find my stopwatch again, which is great because the last few episodes I was having to use a, um, an iPad. It wasn't particularly brilliant. Anyway, uh, we're going to finish off the kite shaped foot. This is part two of the kite shaped foot. The episode before this one uh, was part one, obviously. And uh, just to recap, most humans will get a kite shaped foot. And now I'm just going to go into some of the fitting implications of uh, the kite shaped foot finishing up for part two and it's a very important shape to um, have in your head because it's going to inform your buying of footwear and it's going to bring you closer to that absolutely ideal fit in the shoes which is wonderful um, i'm not talking about massive edema i'm not talking about super swelling um, i'm not talking about a very very boxy foot profile i'm going to go through that probably in the next video the the three basic foot profiles but for now i've got two minutes on my trusty stopwatch to talk about or to finish up talking about the kite shaped foot. So here we go. So um, basically when it comes to shoes, the basic choice, if, you know, if you're not aware of the kite shaped foot, um, you're gonna go for something that is wide all over because you might find that your shoes are crushing the front of your foot. Um, but if you go for something that's wide all over and you get that space and that height and that width at the front of the shoe, very often it means that the back of the shoe is also floppy and loose as well. So your ankle bounces around like a pea in a shopping bag and it's very difficult to keep shoes on. You end up shuffling and taking shorter steps. That's kind of bad as well. The other side of where it's bad is that if you try and buy a shoe to satisfy the need for command and control at the back of it with your narrow ankle, if you've got a kite shaped foot like most humans, then um, you're not leaving enough width and height at the front of the shoe. So very often you get compression issues where you start crushing either the bunion bone, the hallux valgus, or toe number five, which is normally capsized outwards anyway. Um, and uh, just to reiterate that point, how do you tell if a shoe is wide at the front? Well, go back to my other episode, episode seven, which I'm just gonna flash up on the left-hand side of your screen over there, so you can have a look at that and go through fitting and that kind of stuff. Like I said, most humans are dimly aware that their foot has started changing from middle age, and it tends to go in a very distinctive kite shape. And again, go back to the last episode where you can see the graphic that I put up to illustrate that. And um, when people look down after their feet have changed, they, they kind of think, well, I've got a really wide foot, but they're not looking at the back of the ankle because when your skeleton stops growing at 21, that ankle width is more or less fixed, okay? And again, I'm not talking about sports injuries or swelling and that kind of stuff, but ultimately, if you have the back of the ankle flopping around in a shoe, you lose a lot of support. And funny enough, on the right-hand side of the video, now I'm gonna put another video that I did, which is all about support and the kind of things that you need from the back of a shoe, the underneath of a shoe, the mid part of the shoe, etc. I'm the Comfort Shoe Guy. Thank you very much.